Hello again, church family. I'm so glad that you could be joining us again today. We're continuing on our series that's called Becoming Disciples to Make Disciples. And we've been looking at faith for the last couple of weeks because everything that we do as a disciple of Christ starts and finishes with faith. And so that's why we've been doing four weeks on faith so we can make sure that we have our firm foundation upon the words of Jesus Christ. So let's get started. I'm really excited about this because everything we do is a regarding faith. And as we put our trust in the word of God through faith, we will become Christ's disciples. We will represent him really well and will help others become better disciples of Christ as well. And that is the goal of this entire series is that we could become disciples of Christ better, representing him well and help others become disciples as well. So this is called If You Have Faith. This is the continuation on the faith where we had two sort of motions of faith, coming to God in faith and then walking with him out of faith. But we have to remember that everything that we do has a firm foundation on the word of God. Romans 10, 17 reminds us that faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. That is our firm foundation. We don't we're not self-actualizing an idea that came internal to ourselves and we repeat it over and over and over until it feels like truth. No, we're not depending upon the word of another person, another man or another woman, and we put our faith in them. No, we put our, our faith on the word of God, which comes through Jesus Christ. It is from him that we have a firm foundation, from the words of Jesus Christ. So faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And that's exactly what we want to make sure that we always do. So as I said, last week we looked at coming to God in faith. And we saw when we seek him in faith, we know that he rewards those who do. And so we come to the Father. We come to the Father through Jesus Christ, full of faith, expecting that he wants to hear us, that he loves us, and he's going to give us a response. We might not always know the response, but we believe, as Hebrews eleven six says, that he rewards those who seek him. And that is one definition of faith. And so we looked at just this three sort of steps, and we're going to mirror those in this next section, but three steps of first, you know about Jesus, or you know about the Lord, you hear a truth about him. So then you come to Jesus and you ask him about something and you ask from a place of faith. In the story we looked at last week, he asked the centurion, the Roman soldier, asked for a healing. So he heard about Jesus he came to Jesus in faith, and then he expected much. He went away expecting his answer. And so that's coming to God. That's the first motion of coming to God in faith. And so that's what we looked at last week. And this week, we're going to look at the second motion, which is going with God in faith. So we come to God, and now we're going to go with God in faith. And that's when we partner with his word, which is also known as obedience. And so that's the second motion of faith that's super important for us to know. These two motions, coming to God in faith and partnering with God as we go in faith. Without one or the other, sometimes we're going to fall short and we're going to miss walking in the fullness of faith that God wants us to. And so the first thing, Jesus actually mentions this in numerous places about how we need to not just be hearers of God's word, but also doers of his word. In Matthew 7, 24 is one of the many places that he mentions this, that his true disciples would be ones who hear and do it. Matthew 4, 7, 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who has built his house on the rock. And so he's emphasizing the does. They go into action. They partner with God. They hear and receive the word of Jesus Christ, and then they go do it. And that's actually this foundation of the steps. Remember, hearing, faith comes by hearing. So you hear a word from the Lord, or you read it in Scripture, and then you go do it believing God is going with you. And that's really what this emphasis is that we want to share. So what does that sort of look like in three parts? Again, just sort of using a really, really easy three three sections to this motion of going with God and faith. And so the first one is we come to God. We come to him according to the word that he has. So we come to the one who is full of wisdom, the one who is full of power, the one who is full of grace. And we come to him in those ways already. We come to him asking, Lord, should I move to this town or city? Should I 
you know, seek a degree in this particular field? Should we have another kid? These are all questions we would come to the God of wisdom for. Or if we need a healing or something miraculous, we come to the God of power. Or if we re need to remember that our sins are forgiven, that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9, we come to the God of grace. But that's absolutely the first step is we come to God. And then the second step is, we get a word from him. So we approach God expecting that he's going to speak to us. And sometimes we just read the word of the Lord. We read in scripture the word. And so we hear a word or we learn the word. Sometimes we have a good teacher and they teach us a word of the Lord. And so we receive a word of the Lord regarding your situation or the thing that you're in or just something you need to grow in as an identity of a son or a daughter of Christ, as a disciple of the Most High God. We learn or we hear a word of the Lord. But it doesn't stop there, just as Jesus reminded us. It's not hearers, but also doers who are the wise men and women. And so the last step is to do the word. So we come to God, we get a word from him, and then we go do the word. We join with God according to the action that he gave us in the word. And so this is this three-step thing. And if you look at scripture from the Old Testament and how people interacted with God from Moses and Abraham to pe people who interacted with the, the prophets and with kings and the priests, you'll see this dynamic repeated over and over and over again, just over and over and over. So one example that I wanted to bring up is Luke 17, verses 12 through 14. You can read the whole chapter, especially the first part of the verse, and you'll see an interaction that Jesus had. But he said he, he had this interaction. Ten lepers came to him, and they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. And that's the whole story. But in just three verses, we see all three of those elements represented. First, they came to Jesus. Ten men, they stood at a distance. They stood at a distance and they yelled at him. Now, they did that because according to the cleansely rules, that lepers, people with leprosy had to make sure they stayed at a distance. And so because of they just didn't want to give their contagious skin disease to other people. So they stayed at a distance. They were actually honoring the Lord in their approach to him. But in that, they sought Jesus out. And so that's the first one. They came to Jesus. They came to him. And then they asked him about their problem. They, they asked him. They heard a word of the Lord. They said, Jesus, have pity on us. And he said, go show yourselves to the priest. So that's the second one. Jesus responded. And he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And so they heard a word of the Lord. But they weren't healed at the hearing of of the word. They were healed when they responded to the word of the Lord. Look at that last part. As they went, they were cleansed. And so sometimes God answers our prayers just as we approach him. But sometimes in his divine wisdom, in his circumstances, and the way he wants to work with us, he asks us to go out into the world. He asks us to join him with some action. And again, you can see this throughout the Old Testament, the ministry of Jesus, and even in the New Testament church as the church grew up through the epistles that Paul and Peter wrote. That you see sometimes faith in coming to the Lord, the faith to hear a word, is then matched with the faith in going. And so as they went, they were cleansed. I just want to tell you that sometimes it's just as easy when God gives you a word. Sometimes you will get your answer when you just take one step down the road that the Lord pointed. And so some of you need to hear that right now, that you, you heard the word of the Lord and he said, go that way. And you haven't actually taken a step down that road. You, you saw the road, you heard the road, you understand the road, but you haven't taken a step down the road. And so you feel like God's not with you because like the leopards, they weren't cleansed standing there. They weren't cleansed when they heard the word. They were cleansed when they went. And so some of us need to start going. We need to be able to say in the past tense, I heard the word of the Lord and I went and he answered me because that's just the way that God loves to interact with us in our going. If we look at so, so many of the other stories in the Old Testament, Abraham, he was told that he would have a son by the angel of the Lord. By this time next year, as the summary goes, you will have a son. And he believed the word of the Lord and he knew his wife, Sarah. He couldn't just sit there on the side of his tent for a whole year and that word be complete. 
He had to match it with the action of knowing his wife. And similarly, Moses and other people, the Lord gave them a word and they went and did it. And I already mentioned, you know, we mentioned uh, leprosy that Jesus healed. But also in 2 Kings, we see that Elisha healed an army officer who had leprosy. And the army officer came to the man of the Lord and he said, I hear the Lord can heal leprosy. And the man of the Lord said, Elisha said, go dip yourselves seven times in the Jordan River. So for some reason, God didn't just heal the man when he came to him. It was this third step where he needed to go in faith and join with the word of the Lord. So he heard the word, which was go dip seven times in the Jordan River. And he actually had to match that with the action of seven dips into the Jordan River. What happened after one dip? Nothing. After two, nothing. After six, nothing happened. After seven, when he fulfilled the word of the Lord, when he simply engaged and did what the the Lord said, then he was healed. He matched his faith with coming with a faith of action. It was just the same amount of faith. Well, I came all this distance to find a healing from the Lord, and now I just need to add seven dips into the Jordan River. That's sometimes what God asks us to do, just to continue to move in relationship with him. he, He blesses that we came to him, in faith. But then he says, go with me a little longer in faith and you will see the thing that you're asking for. And so this is going with God in faith. So sometimes you ask, well, do I have enough faith? Do I really have enough faith? I ask that to myself sometimes and other people ask, well, how can I make sure I have enough faith? Well, really the short answer is it's not complex. Yes. Yes, you already have enough faith. Because if you came to God, you coming is acknowledging that he's the one with your answer. He's the one who can solve your problem. He's the one that can give you divine direction or give you a healing in your body or can help save your soul. So if you came to God, you're showing faith. Because remember that verse in Hebrews 11.6 doesn't say those who find God, he rewards. It's those who seek him find the rewards in faith. If you seek him in faith, if you come merely to his presence and say, you're the one that I believe can answer my problem, can solve my issue, then you're coming in faith. It doesn't take much faith. And actually, one of the parables when he was correcting his disciples illustrates this. It's the parable. It's not really a parable. It's an answer of a mustard seed. And so they were the disciples of Christ. Go read the whole chapter in Matthew 17. But the disciples of Christ were trying to cast a demon out of a young boy and they couldn't do it. They had no faith for some reason. For some reason, they had no faith to get it done. And Jesus said, it's because of your little faith, your very little faith, that they couldn't get it done. For truly, I say to you, if you have a faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be possible for you. Now, it appears that you need to have some faith, some faith to come. But Jesus was saying the smallest seed, the smallest deposit that you can possibly have, the the mustard seed's the smallest seed that grows into a, a, a fruit bearing plant. It's the smallest one. And so Jesus is trying to say, if you have but a, the littlest amount that you can hold in your hand, if you have the smallest amount that still bears fruit later, like a mustard seed, then you have enough faith. So it's not Really, do you need more faith? Many times you need to add the action. You came to the Lord. He gave you a word. You simply need to continue what you started in faith by doing the word of the Lord. And these words of the Lord, of course, means the scripture, the Bible, the word of God. But it also is the word of God that he speaks to your heart. And sometimes we hear in through prophecy or through small group encouragements, words of wisdom and the various gifts of of the Holy Spirit. Because when you look at John chapter one, it says the word of God was Jesus. It's the relationship we have with Jesus, which is the word of God. But really, if you're coming to the Lord, you have enough faith, just continue in that faith and you will see the things that you're seeking for. And so sometimes we ask, I'm wavering. I'm I'm seeing, I don't think I'm going to make it. I think it's, my faith is going to fall over. I'm not going to see it to the end. Or you think, well, what if God might not do this thing? And you start having these doubts. You start having these complications in your mind. And I I get it. This happens. 
Absolutely. Let me share a story. I was on a healing prayer line once when I was in Brazil on a missions trip, and we were praying for healing for various people. And this young lady came up and she said she had a headache and she really wanted prayer for her headache. But while she was standing in the line, she told me through the interpreter, her stomach started hurting. Her stomach started hurting. And right when I wanted to pray for her stomach, because that's the thing that just came right now, I had this doubt come into my head. It's not going to work. And if you pray for the stomach and the pain doesn't go away, she will never believe that God wants to take her headache, her migraines away. And so I had this doubt that said, don't pray because if you fail once, you'll fail twice also. It was just doubt that wanted me to not work in faith with God, to not declare faith over her according to scripture. It really was a fiery dart of the enemy that wanted to stop up my mouth so I would not pray for this young lady. I immediately threw that thought out, recognizing for what it was. This whole interaction took about one second, just a long pause before I prayed. But it was pretty intense, actually. It was a very loud, fiery dart coming from the evil. And that's where we have to remember that when we have the armor of God, and we can read this at a later time, but the shield is called a shield of faith. It's not an offensive weapon of faith. It's a shield that extinguishes fiery darts. And many times those fiery darts come in the form of doubts, of unbelief statements that pass through our mind that want to negate the mustard seed of faith. You have enough faith. It's just sometimes we listen to the doubts that come into our head. And so that's why we raise the shield of faith and it extinguishes those doubts. So that's the first thing. But really, what we need to do, if you're wavering and there's no condemnation in Christ, it's all right to sometimes battle and wrestle. The first thing you should do is just return to the word that you heard. You already came to the Lord. You came to God. And then you heard a word from the Lord. If you start wavering in the action, just return to the word. Return to the word. Talk to Jesus about his word. As I said just a few moments ago, the word of God is Jesus John chapter 1 says, and the word was made flesh. The word of God is Jesus Christ. We have a relationship with him. As the old saying goes, he comes into our heart and the whole, through the Holy Spirit, we commune with God. And so we can talk to him. We can ask him why our heart is troubled or why our mind is wavering and have an open and honest conversation. Maybe it will only take a moment, like in my example. Maybe it will take an evening. Maybe it will take a week. But then when you grab a hold of the word and talk to Jesus about it, and be honest about why you might be wavering. I believe the word and your faith in that word is going to grow. And then you can get back to that walking with God out the word that he gave you. And so that's just really simply, if you're wavering in anything that's a part, if you really don't believe that God forgives you of your sins for salvation, go back to the word and remind yourself that it is by faith we are saved. It is a grace. It is not by work. For, none should, for you could boast if it was a work of man, but none can boast according to the salvation of Jesus Christ. Summarizing there right at the end. And so if you're wavering on does Jesus love me and did he save me and did he really forgive my sins, you just go back to the word, the scripture, and it will remind your heart. It will, remem it will remind you. And if you need remembrance on other things, go back to the word. Or if you've ever had a, a uh, just a download from the Lord. It's always good to write those down because you're going to need to review them. They will strengthen you. They will help you if you're ever wavering. Or if a friend ever gave you a word of wisdom in a small group or during a prayer time, gather those up, write them down. I know a pastor, he said he has a, a whole folder of all the words that God gave him specifically for his life and his family and his ministry. And whenever he's struggling with doubt and unbelief or he's going through a hard time where there's only storm clouds and no sunshine, he just opens those up and he reads it again. He returns to the word that God gave him. And of course, he returns to scripture. And so these are all the things that we can do forever wavering. But really, as I noted before, it only takes a little faith. You have the faith. We just need to move into the action realm of that faith at times. And Jesus will be really pleased and we'll start seeing all the things that we're asking God for. And so just as a really brief remembrance, we hear the word of God by coming to him and receiving it in our heart. And then we do the word by partnering with him according to the word. And we go out in faith. Both of these are still faith motions. We come to him and we go from him with him. It's both faith. We do not work according to the way the world works or anything like that. And so lastly, I just want to say, let's 
let's be marvelous to Jesus as we ended the sermon last week. That Jesus marveled at the faith that he found in a man. Let's become people who are marvelous to Jesus, that he marvels at because we hear his word and we believe it's true, not for other people, but we believe it's true for ourselves. And then we go with the word and we do according to what he said. If he said, go here and preach the word or go to the supermarket and look and I will show you someone to give the message of salvation to, then go to the supermarket, wait and ask him who might receive the word and then go share it with them. Yes, it takes boldness. Yes, it takes faith. But then we're entering into the deep things of the Lord by hearing his word and being doers of his word. We want to make sure that Jesus finds faith on the earth. We want to make sure that we are faith-filled disciples in everything that we do. This is a setup for all the other topics that we're going to be studying as we become disciples who make disciples. But after these four weeks, I pray that your faith is increased and your hope and your knowledge that you can walk in faith and you can believe all of these things because it's only faith by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And then we become doers of his word and we can walk in faith. For we know those who live by Christ walk in faith. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope to see you soon next time.